back here to Santa Barbara about two and a half years ago. And we have been doing real estate in Australia. I'm not from there, I'm from England, as you very well pointed out, Alain, thank you. Um, um, but we, we, I used to have a restaurant over there with my wife, and we started doing real estate over there. Moved back over here, we met here, and wanted to move back, and you know, why wouldn't we want to move back to Santa Barbara? And in doing that, we, I continued doing real estate, and met Dan, came to the meetings, and so on and so forth. And um, as we're all told, we go out and find our mentor, or mentors. And I found one, and after about three or four weeks of starting to get to understand what he, he was about, and so on and so forth, he said to me, um, well, if you really want to make some serious money, I can show you how. I said, okay. That's why I'm employing you, <laughs> you know. And he said, well, it's not actually in real estate, albeit there's a lot of um, similarities to, to what I do, but it's in oil. And he's an oil, an oil operator, mm. which means he's got an, a, a company that operates and maintains oil wells. And he's based out in Texas. So I said, okay, how do I, you know, it got my interest, obviously. And um, he told me, you know, basically what the, what the school was. So, um, for about six months, I started doing my due diligence and understanding a lot more about what um, what he was asking of me and so on and so forth. And essentially, all he was asking of me to begin with was to bird dog um, for him. And I know that you understand that, those expressions because that's exactly how I started doing what I was doing for real estate. So it was kind of a, an easier, easy transition to do it from one industry, as it were, to another. Um, the difference is, is that the way he bird dog is, is kind of an inverted way. He had the deals, I didn't have to find them. I just had to find the investors. And um, it actually, for the first six months, proved a lot harder because I just didn't believe in, in what he was telling me that could happen. Um, and then I, I ended up doing a, um, I was invited to do a webinar, and the webinar came through my webinar, um, I got my first customer, and I thought, my God, and it happened, and it was like, Ooh. and I made a lot of money out of it. And from that point on, I realised that you know there there was some serious money to be made, and I started trying to formulate and come up with a model or a business model as to how I can make this into a business for myself. And over the last year or so, I've now. I've been formulating that, and two weeks ago, US oil investment went live. I'm still in the throes of building and adding to the website. Um, and, <clears throat> and it's gotten to the point now that, you know, it's, it's kind of taking my um, focus away from real estate. Um, and I do this, uh, well, pretty much well full time now. Um, so, the one thing, there, there are several things that got me doing it because I <coughs> relate to the processes of how to structure the deals. Because you can, you know, I, I guess a lot of people hear about oil on the news every day. It goes up and down, up and down, and people lose money, make money, and so on and so forth. But, you know, by a show of hands, how many people have actually been involved in an oil deal of any nature? Cool. What kind of deal was it? I worked in oil rigs. Did you really? Where about? Texas. Shippers, Where about? Shippers World Service. Um, uh, Liberty County between uh, Houston and uh, Beaumont. Oh, or, right. Sorry, Port Arthur. Houston and Port Arthur. Awesome. So, so you've been around those deals. Right. And, and you, <laughs> you've been around those deals, okay? And you can maybe understand that there is a lot of money there to be made. But like anything, it's knowing who you're deal, dealing with. You know, if you get into with, in with a bad property manager, it doesn't matter how nice your property is, you won't make money out of it, or probably you wouldn't. Having a good operator in the oil business is exactly the same. And I'm not talking about that I deal with people like ExxonMobil and all the rest of it. I'm talking about dealing with small, independent operators who have got maybe 60, 70, 100 wells under their remit, okay? And investors um, who, I don't know if you understand or know how these deals are put together, but um, the the company, the main company, um, whether it be an exploration company or an, a 
operator himself who's the, who's the driller, they split their risk by finding investors to come in to share on the risk and the rewards. And the rewards are very high. Okay? There's, no, there's no getting away from that. You can make 20, 30, 40, 50%, 100% return on your money, six to eight, nine months um, over, you know, in a year. Okay? Easily done, and honestly, I'm doing it right now. One of the misconceptions is that it's expensive to get into these kind of deals. And that was my misconception and misunderstanding in the beginning, because whilst you can spend upwards of $200,000 on buying a well outright and have an operator operate it on your behalf and you pay him a monthly fee, um, you can get into work buying what are called working interests for as little as $2,500. Okay? I mean, that's the smallest one I've seen. I'm sure you can find something for less, um, but for $2,500, you can be buying um, a 1%, 1 1.5% working interest, which is essentially buying, you're not buying a company or into the company, you're, you're buying um, the, the right to the, to, to the revenue of the sale of the oil that is coming out of the wellhead. So, so you're investing in royalties? Um, no. It's not royalties. No. Oh. Mm -hmm. You see, there are two, there are two, um, in the US, and this is pretty um, unique to the US, there are two types of interests or um, uh, estates to, to, to land. There's your surface rights and your, your mineral rights. I'm sure most, most of you probably know that. What can be done is you can sever them. So you can sell your mineral rights or you can lease them out without selling the, the land itself. And that's what makes these kind of deals, or the oil industry over here, so unique to the small investor. You don't have to be a big company because you can go in, if you can find somebody with a 600 acre tract of land, if you know that there's oil under there, you can approach them and say, I'll lease your, I'll lease your mineral rights. You don't have to buy the land. So you pay um, a, a fee for, for creating the lease, and you then obviously have you know, your, your drillers come in, they drill the wells, and I'm very much simplifying it, it's a lot more technical than this, but drill the wells, you hit the oil, and you start pumping it out, and you sell it. And you're selling it essentially to the big guys, the, you know, the, the majors, okay? Whether it be through a middleman um, on the ground in the area, or could be ExxonMobil, who have got um, sites there, um, <clears throat> and they're buying your production. And what happens is that in the lease agreements, you have a, um, the royalty interest is then created by having the owner agree to allow you to extract the oil, and he gets paid what is there for royalty interest. You, on the other hand, are buying the working interest. So for every dollar or for every dollar of oil that you sell, in the lease will be um, governed by what you give the landowner or the mineral rights owner, usually somewhere between 12 to 25%. Um, over the years, it used to be about 12, 12 and a half. Now it's more likely 20, 25% you'll find. So for every dollar, you're getting 75 cents. Now, the beauty of royalty interest is that the landowner doesn't have to pay any um, uh, operating costs or any fees apart from what's called the severance tax, which is a state levy tax, um, differs in, from state to state. But he'll pay uh, in Texas, which is where I deal mostly, uh, entirely at the moment, with, with the oil deals that I'm, I'm working